Okay, on to Unit 2A, Section 4B, and we're going to continue with function notation because it does get a little more complicated. If you haven't done the homework from 4A, it's not a good idea to start 4B, okay, because I've already explained how this works, okay, and if you didn't watch 4A, you're not going to understand what's going on here. I'm doing 4B with the assumption that you have an understanding from 4A, okay? So our first example, we're going to use these functions, f of x equals 4x minus 5, g of x equals x plus 3, and I'm going to go a step further this time, and I'm going to do h of x equals x squared. Okay, so we're going to use these in our example. Sure. Got this under control. Okay. So, A, we're going to find f of x minus 1. So you can see it's getting a little more complicated. We're going to follow the same rules I explained before. Let's write down our equation with the x's still intact. f of x, I know to use the f because this says f, so I go find the f function. f of x equals 4x minus 5. Now, the next step I told you was to leave blanks where the x is. Now this time I know I have to put more than one thing in, so I'm going to make my blanks a little bigger. So f of blank equals 4 blank minus 5. And again, what's going in those blanks is what I asked in the beginning that was given to you in the problem. What's going in that blank is x minus 1. So I'm going to put x minus 1 in the blanks. Same rule applies. Leave the left-hand side alone, evaluate the right-hand side, or simplify the right-hand side. So f of x minus 1 stays the same. In the right-hand side, I see what I can do first. Well, there's a lot going on here, but I see parentheses. So before I do anything, I'm going to distribute that 4. So I'm going to take the 4, and I'm going to go 4 times x and 4 times negative 1. That's going to give me 4x minus 4. I took care of the parentheses, and then we have that 5 kind of out there waiting, so minus 5. I'm still not done with this problem. I need to simplify it one step further. 4x minus 1, again, left-hand side being left alone. Right-hand side is going to be 4x minus 9, because negative 4 minus 5 is negative 9. And that's it. There's nothing else we can do at this point. And we're not solving. We're simplifying or evaluating if we're given a number. Okay? Let's move on to B. So B says find G of 3A plus 5, okay? The G tells us which equation to use, and inside the parentheses tells us what we're going to replace our X with, still following all the same rules that I've used before. I don't like the way I colored that G. Let me finish coloring it. Does that help? Eh, not much. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite the problem. g of x equals, and what was g of x? x plus 3. Next step, write it with a blank. I look to see what I'm going to be putting in the blank to make sure my blank is big enough. What's going in the blank? 3a plus 5. Do I touch the left-hand side of my equation. No, we are just evaluating this function. We are not solving for anything. So I just leave g of 3a minus 5, oh, plus 5. Sorry, I almost messed that up. On the right-hand side, we'll do some simplifying. Is there anything that needs to be distributed over that quantity 3a plus 5? There is not, so I can get rid of the parentheses. And then I have that plus 3. And so I finish the problem off by combining like terms. The a doesn't have anything that it can be combined with on the right-hand side. And the 5 and 3 can go together to make an 8. 
That's my answer. Okay? C. Let's go to another problem. C. Now this one gets a little bit confusing. I think they are a little confusing, but it just takes some practice and it takes some determination to figure this out. Please don't sit there and say, I'll never get that. That's a lie. That's not true. There's nobody in this algebra class that can't get this. It may take more work on someone's part and it may take less work on somebody else's part. But if you put the effort in that you need, you will learn this. So we're going to use the H of 9 and here's where it gets a little weird. We're going to add a 7 to the end of that, okay? The H tells us which equation to use, and the 9 tells us what we're going to replace the X with, okay? Or what we're evaluating for. Again, this is where it's going to be a little different. I'm going to write the H of X, but I'm going to add that 7 on the end, because that kind of gets done on the end. That's like an extra piece. So on the other side, it's going to, well, that's not the color I just used. That's going to bother me. Got to fix it. Equals, well, what's h of x? h of x is x squared. So x squared, and then that weird plus 7 on the end. Someone decided we needed to add on the end, okay? Again, now we're going to rewrite it. See, nothing's changing. I'm still following the same steps. Wherever there's the x's, I'm going to leave blanks big enough to replace with what I've been told to replace it. Again, make sure you put these parentheses because you're going to start getting things wrong if you don't use those parentheses. And there's that weird plus 7 hanging out on the end. Okay, what are we putting in for that x? We've been told to put in a 9. We're going to leave the left-hand side alone, so we're just going to write h of 9 plus 7, stays the same, and we're going to simplify or evaluate the right-hand side. First thing in order of operation, is parentheses. Well, there's nothing in the parentheses to do. And then there's exponent. So 9 squared is not 18. It's repeated multiplication. 9 times 9 is 81. And again, we have that weird 7 on the outside waiting to be added. So our final step is to add the 7. So h of 9 plus 7 equals 88. We're going to do a couple more. I just, I'm trying to hit all types. That's why I wanted to do a second day of function notation because there's a lot of different ways that this can happen that we can use function notation. I wanted to give you a lot of good examples. So example D is going to be, and we kind of did this last one, but let's make sure we got it. Find f of 9 minus g of 3, and then we're going to do a weird thing. We're going to add a 42 on the end. The meaning of life and answer to anything. Anybody know what I'm talking about with that? Okay. The first thing I do is write it down with my x's. f of x minus g of x. And then we have that weird 42 that we're adding to it. All right. On the opposite side, what does f of x equal? f of x is 4x minus, is it 5? Yep, 4x minus 5. So in parentheses, I'm going to do 4x minus 5 g of x, oops, it's subtract, let's make sure I'm careful and not rushing. See, I started to rush and I stopped being careful. So I'm going to subtract g of x. Well, g of x is x plus 3. And then we have our 42 hanging out on the end. That gets added at the very end, okay? Next step I told you to do. Well, and if you need to go back and highlight, this is our f value. In our f value, we're going to replace x with a 9. In our g equation, we're going to replace it with 3. So you might have to color code it. That might be something you need to do. And I'll try to do that as we go. So we're going to go f of blank minus g of blank plus 42 equals 4 of blank minus 5 minus blank plus 3 and then what do we have hanging out on the end? That plus 42 that they said we had to add on the end, the problem set. What do we put in for the f function for x? We're going to put in a 9. What are we putting in for the y, I mean the g function for x? We're going to put in a 3. Again, we're going to leave the left-hand side alone. So f of 9 
minus g of 3 plus 42. We're going to simplify and evaluate the right-hand side. So, in that first parenthesis, the first thing I can do is 4 times 9 is 36. And then we have a minus 5 still there. In that second parenthesis, well, there's nothing in that 3, so we can just do 3 plus 3 is 6. I'm going to leave the parenthesis for now. If you're not sure, leave the parenthesis. We can always take it away later. And then again, we still have that 42 sitting on the end just waiting to be at it, okay? All right. Rewrite the left-hand side, f of 9 minus g of 3 plus 42 equals 36 minus 5. 36 minus 5 is 31. If you're not sure, keep the parentheses for now. Minus 6 plus 42. And when you put that, you will get 67. So f of 9 minus g of 3 plus 42 equals 67. All right, for you math lovers, for people who like to get extra credit, we're going to do a just for, and I know it sounds silly, but it is fun for me. We're going to do just for fun challenge. I actually call it that. Just for fun challenge. You can all handle this. You just have to listen and try it. I love these. I will tell you that some of you are really going to like this. Okay. We're going to do, we're going to use the same equations that we were using before. And we're going, so let me write them down. F of x equals, let me make sure I get this right, 4x minus 5. G of x was x plus 3. And h of x is x squared. I'm going to put these between them so we know what's going on. Okay, we're going to use those same ones. I'm using a fun color, aren't I? Because this is fun. All right, the first one. This is called composition, and we'll learn it later in Algebra 2, but I like to show you sometimes, I like to stretch your brain a little bit to see if you can take it a step further. F of G of 10. We work from the inside out. So let's do what I said before. Let's see if I can do this right. We're going to do F of g of x. Okay? Well, I'm going to keep that f, this is a little different, I'm going to keep the f alone, but I'm going to replace g of x with what g of x equals. So g of x equals x plus 3. All right? So f of g of 10. But wait, we were told that the x needs to become something. So the x needs to become a blank for this problem. Notice I'm leaving the left hand, left hand side alone. I'm just mess messing with the right. So what goes in that blank? Well, the only thing they told us was 10. So I'm going to take this 10, and that's what I'm going to put in the blank, is a 10. And then I have a plus 3. So I'm still not doing anything to the left hand side. I'm just messing on the right hand side, seeing what I can figure out. Do I know what 10 plus 3 is? Yeah, it's 13. So that's f of 13. Okay. Left-hand side hasn't changed. Well, do I know what f of x is? Well, yeah, back up here I told you f of x was 4x minus 5. So I'm going to put 4x minus 5 for f of x, because that's what we're dealing with. We need a blank, though, for that x, right? I actually told you a number, so I'm going to put a blank where that x is. What goes in the blank? Oh, I keep picking the same colors. 13 is what I told you to replace it with, or what we figured out to replace it with. So I'm going to put a 13 in here. Left side hasn't changed. Just moving along, just simplifying the right. So we do 4 times 13, and we subtract 5, and our answer, 47. So f of g of 10 47. Did you get it? I'm going to do a really hard one with you guys. Let's see how well you can handle this. Let's try it. This time we're going to do f of g of 
h of 3. And those of you who really love to do math, I know you'll take the time to try this. I got the answer. Whoa, did I get the right answer? You better check my work. I got the answer of 43. Let's see if you can check my work and see if I, you can get that correct. Come show it to me. If you can show me step by step how to do this problem and get the answer, I will have some type of reward for you, probably candy. If you're in Mr. McGrath's class or Mr. Wells' class, just come and see me, show me your work, and I'll probably have something for you.